There are my comic book people. It may have been a small week for everyone else out there, but it was a big week for me. I got 13 comics. Let's get through them then, shall we? First one is Axel Man of War 37, and I still don't know what this half a black and white cover is. I mean, is that, is that supposed to be some special collector's edition that, I mean, I don't know, like, they have a logo there and no logo, I mean, I, I do not understand the point of that, but uh, they've been doing it for, I guess, all of this dead hand stuff for Exo Man of War. Exo's been always a good series. I enjoy. Oh, look, it's all the Exos. Dun dun dun. It's time to fight. So I guess it's the big battle issue. By the way, last week's Exo Man of War 25th Anniversary Edition was pretty good. It was just uh, gave us sort of the origin behind the Exo armor that they really haven't told us before. A little more flavor for Exo. Wasn't. Uh, the greatest thing in the world, but I enjoyed it when I was unsure I would. But anyway, Exo Man of War, solid comic. And next we have Revival, number 30. Uh, I don't think this one's been out in a couple of months. Um, looks like they've been put into some sort of concentration camp, the Revivers, with dead on their shirts. I guess we're taking a turn for the f what people feared with their, in the small town. They'd put the Revivers in special camps. There's the ghosts that somehow have something to do with the revival. Just a quick peek. I've been enjoying this one. Well, how to put 30, 30 issues? This must be uh, nearing three, to be put it about two and a half years old if it came out monthly. So it must be somewhere up around two and a half to three years old. But I've been buying this one. Eh, I don't have a lot of comic series at 30, so it's, a, it's amazing that this one is. But anyway, revival, good solid one. And then there's mind management number four, 34, another one in the 30s. Uh, this one's about to come to, to an end in two issues. Once again, they went for the the thinner. I guess they switched over to the 24-page uh, style. Excellent story. We're getting to the climax where Maru... That was her right there. Let me show you. Where'd Maru go? The Up, oh, there's the... The enemy... I'm getting for a bit... That's Maru, the hero of our story. Where the, she's fighting... Um, stand, uh, 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 what am I saying? I wish I knew where she's having a final stand against the, the renewed mind management. And I think they're... I've read something about their, the final issue of this is going to be a one-issue standalone. I'm like, well, that, that's kind of crazy. I better make sure that's on my pull list, because it, otherwise it's a, a whole other series. I, I, I don't know why they'd put the last issue in its own series, but they are. But mind management, one of my favorite books of the last few years. Check it out. Manifest Destiny, issue number 15. Lewis and Clark versus Monsters. That's all you need to know. Up to this issue, we're having a fist fight between uh, Meriwether Lewis and some guy who wants to prove him wrong. Oh, that covers an ad for Starve, which I never checked out. Uh, wounds. Something's happening with that, too. But, you know, monster fighting comic. <laughs> Historical fiction monster fighting comic. I'm enjoying this one. And here we have Lazarus, number 17. Harder to, descri harder to describe in a few words. It's uh, a dystopian future, sort of elements of sci-fi. Little, I guess you'd call them super heroic, at least superpowers for Lazarus there. And lots of political intrigue. Different families rule different parts of the country, and they're all vying with with each other for power and resources, and they all have, like, super-powered defenders who they put into, but they don't, they, they only kind of fight every now and then ritually, so they're not like they're real, there's any super-powered battles going on, but they're always kind of training and preparing and being genetically modified so they can be stronger, faster, fight better, and, uh, Forever, right there, is our Lazarus, and she's trying to figure out exactly what's going on in this world of his, of hers, because things aren't always what they seem in Lazarus. Anyway, good comic. And here we go with Dark Horse Presents, Volume 3, Issue 11. Mike Mignola's Abe Sapien is in this one. I, I, I'm not very familiar with uh, Mignola's um, world of Hellboy. I've only read a little of it, so... But I always enjoy Dark Horse Presents. There's always go a good variety of stories in it. 
five dollars for 48 pages always good um they've been running a lot more previews in this than they have in the past which you know i don't like the preview stuff as much because you don't always get the whole story but still it's a good anthology book if you like that sort of thing and i do alex and ada the final issue the conclusion well this one feels a little thicker than normal too so i I mean that that cover tells you it's not going to end well and the last issue didn't end well i'd flip this open and and show you some stuff but i don't want to spoil it for me and i don't want to spoil it for you so we'll keep this one closed for now but um I'm sure uh, it's going to be a sad conclusion. At least I don't see any happy endings with this one. But it's been a good series, an interesting series, and I'm glad I picked this one up. And next comes Usagi Yojimbo 146, The Thief in the Konoichi, Part 2 of 3. Um, Once again, this one feels thin. I guess they're going with the 24-page comic for Usagi, too. Which is okay, because you, you, know, you always got 22 pages of comic and then some ads in the back. So I guess they're just skipping the ads and stuff. But Usagi Yojimbo is always a reliable, great comic. I've been buying it since whenever it premiered in its own story in the uh, late 80s. And uh, if, if you want a good, good um, anthropomorphic animal comic with... Japanese sword fighting in it, this is the one for you. And next come Warren Warren Ellis and Jason Howard's Trees. Wow, I got a lot of comics this week. There's still a few left in the stack. What is this, number 10 I'm talking about already? Um, We're on to the second story arc. Things have happened with the trees. A bunch of the people from the first story arc died. Uh, Some have come back and and things are changing. Maybe things aren't changing. Interesting story. I'm enjoying this one. Kind of sci-fi, slice of life, character study, sudden violence, weirdness. Uh, Check out Trees if you want a good comic. And next we've got Tech Jacket number 10. I don't think I've ever seen anyone else show this on YouTube. Big war going on. Space war. Um... Sort of similar themes to Exo Man of War. This teenage kid got himself a uh, suit of alien space armor and, you know, he became a hero on Earth. But this latest story arc is all about uh, aliens coming down, giant, huge threat. Like, you know, everything's got to be a giant, huge, world-editing threat these days in superhero stories. Um, and this one is no exception. Giant, huge, world-ending threat that uh, maybe some guys in tech jackets can solve. Otherwise, we all get obliterated. We'll see. Solid superhero action. I enjoy it. Next, we have The Surface, number three. Does that say 03, 04 up there? What is that? There's two issues of Surface? <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. Why does that say 03 04? Uh, you got me. Well, this may, maybe this is issue three of The Surface. Maybe this is issue three and four of The Surface. I don't know. I thought it was a four issue mini, but I'm not even sure now. And I see that. But either way, I've been enjoying this bit of weirdness, this bit of what is reality, where do we live in reality, can we find super reality, quantum phys- quantum me- physics, quantum mechanics, string theory, blah, 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 blah. Am I a butterfly dreaming I'm a man or a man dreaming I'm a butterfly? Either way, I've had fun with it. Surface has been a decent story. And Southern Bastards number nine is back. Uh, for uh, this is the start of the third story arc. Um, the first one was present day guy going back to his old hometown. The second story arc was Coach, the villain of the first story arc. His sort of origin story. They flashed back to his past, and um, to show us kind of how he got to be in this day and age. So now I guess we're back to the present and picking up on some of the stuff that uh, happened at the very end of the last story. Um, Because the last story arc kind of uh, was mostly in the past, but then flash forward to the present with Coach, and I guess we're picking up the present present of Coach again. And we'll probably see the person from the first story arc's daughter is supposed to be entering soon. So we'll see what goes on with Southern Bastards. But it has been an excellent, excellent series. Uh, a A lot of fun with these sort of, I mean... 
these sort of stories about the general meanness of humanity. That's what we got going on here. And speaking of the general meanness of humanity, here's Stray Bullet, Sunshine and Roses, number four. After number three ended with sort of a happy ending, number four took us right back to the no happy endings and stray bullet stories. So I guess we'll continue our early 80s stories of um, this guy right here who's sort of a normal kid who gets caught up with a girl who's involved in the criminal element and and she keeps trying to chase him away because, you know, he shouldn't be part of that criminal element criminal element life but he's smitten and isn't going anywhere and thinks he can help her out and help her solve her problems but it's all going to end badly we know that (laughs) because that's what stray bullets is all about anyway i've another series i've been reading for a decade or however long and it is really really good so check it out and finally i wanted to show you some of the um buckethead superheroes i've been doing since i put them up on ebay i'll put a link underneath um if you want to buy some, uh, my handle is Art by Osborne, same as it is on Etsy. I have some there too. But I've been working on some of these. These are marker and ink. Uh, let's see, we got Superman, Batman, and they're all comic book size, so they fit in here with bags with backing boards. That Spider Woman, a new one, Smiley Flash. Grimacy Punisher, Yvonne Craig Batgirl, who doesn't like Yvonne Craig Batgirl, She-Hulk, and the Black Cat. But anyway, you can always check those out on my eBay or my Etsy. And y'all have a good week now.